Hello, my name is Rand Ackroyd. On behalf of the Plumbing and Drainage Institute, I want to welcome you to our web seminar on sizing grease interceptors. Plumbing and Drainage Institute was first formed in 1949. The organization developed the first performance document for testing grease interceptors. The document is PDI G101. In the 2007 version, it's available as a free download from our website. Since our beginning in 1949, our objectives haven't changed. and They are the advancement of engineered plumbing products through publicity, public relations, research, publishing of standards, and educations such as this web seminar. The important fact is that we must capture the grease before it enters the drain. And grease interceptors are the way we do that. It's surprising how much grease can accumulate in a drainage system from what appears to be small amounts entering the drainage system. But the repeated use of cooking equipment in a commercial kitchen, washing and rinsing off dishes, results in disaster when it comes to our drainage system and the municipal system. This is a recent article from actually my part of the country in New Hampshire, where the article is announcing a restaurant that is back in service after a seven week closure. The closure was due to a grease clog and a failure of the drainage system. But as you can see, the grease is not only a problem to the municipal system, is also a problem to the actual uh, restaurant owner. Before we get further into size and grease interceptors, though, we must be on the same page in terms of what we mean when we use specific terms. When we talk about the term grease interceptor, that term is actually an overall industry term and means several different types of devices. Grease interceptors come in many sizes, many materials, but the fact is that they are all broken down into just two distinct types of grease interceptors. There has been confusion over the past years on the titles. As I've traveled the country with different plumbing codes, different municipalities, the terms they tend to use for their grease interceptors are different. In 19, I mean, in 2006, through an industry consensus, they came up with a distinct name for these two types of grease interceptors, hydromechanical grease interceptors and gravity interceptors. Hydromechanical interceptors can be made out of various materials, but generally they are characterized by their size and in that they can be actually installed within the food preparation area of a commercial kitchen. Gravity interceptors, on the other hand, because of their nature, and we'll talk about their sizing and the reason for their actual size, are quite large and are always installed outside of the actual food preparation area. And most commonly, they're actually buried in the ground. In this picture here, we have a concrete grease interceptor. But they're also made out of plastic and metal. To understand the two types of grease interceptors, we need to talk a little bit about how they actually work. The hydromechanical interceptors uh, use a method of air entrapment, buoyancy of grease. Together, that, that creates a hydromechanical separation. The air actually attaches to the grease and food waste particles as they enter the interceptor. The flow is then forced to the bottom of the interceptor and then through gravity and the acceleration of this material up towards the surface, we get the hydromechanical separation of grease. Hydromechanical interceptors are continually separating grease when there is flow of water through them. Gravity interceptors operate a little bit different. In a gravity interceptor, you're counting on the buoyancy of grease alone for the separation. But to allow this buoyancy to have an effect, we must reduce the volume of the flow going through the interceptor, and that results in the large volume and the large size of a gravity interceptor. With both types, 
prophesizing is important. In fact, it's the key to maintaining the grease removal efficiency of the interceptors. Now, when we talk about sizing, if you're familiar with most plumbing products, sizing is is most often on a plumbing product by the inlet or outlet pipe connection size. With grease interceptors, though, the sizing is not related to their inlet or outlet pipe size. In fact, the sizing terminology is different for the two types of interceptors we, we're going to be talking about. A hydromechanical interceptor, its final size is specified in gallons per minute, GPM. A gravity interceptor, its final size is specified in terms of gallons volume of the interceptor. With both types of interceptors, though, the sizing is basically the same, and it starts with simply knowing the anticipated flow rate in GPM through the drainage. When we talk about the size designations, we'll find out that the hydromechanical interceptor is that the GPM flow that the unit is designed and rated for is actually its size designation, GPM. For the gravity interceptor, once we know the GPM, that is not the size of the interceptor. We must then multiply that GPM by a time factor, since it does take time for this buoyancy of grease to occur. The normal industry accepted time for this buoyancy to separation to occur is 30 minutes. The size designation of a gravity interceptor is actually its gallon per minute flow times 30. And that equals the actual volume size in gallons of the interceptor. A simple example may explain it a little bit better. If the peak flow from a facility drain is 20 GPM, the hydromechanical interceptor size is a 20 GPM interceptor. With a gravity grease interceptor, the size would be the 20 GPM flow times the 30 minutes, which would equal a 600 gallon size gravity grease interceptor. In both interceptors, as you can see, the, the key to the sizing is to calculate the GPM flow. Now, when known fixtures, uh, in other words, a finished facility where you can see the sinks that are involved or the other, other uh, pieces of equipment that relate to the drain system, uh, that's one way to calculate the GPM. But there are also conditions where we have unknown fixtures where building is still in a rough out stage, and we'll talk about the sizing for that also. So we have the known fixtures. It's really simply a matter of taking the total flow of all of the fixtures in GPMs. If it's a sink, you can calculate the gallons flow by calculating the volume of the sink times the drain down time of the sink. There may be other fixtures in the kitchen that have an actual GPM flow rate established for them, such as a wash down hood in a uh, cooking area. But basically, you take all of these fixtures, total them up, and you will find the GPM drain. There's more detailed information on this in the PDI document G101. That's our standard for the performance of the grease interceptors. But in Appendix A, you will find some additional aids on sizing and determining the GPM flow for the hydromechanical interceptor. When the fixtures are unknown, again, as we talked about, can happen in a facility where it's basically a build-out, but yet it's been required to have a grease interceptor uh, put in as part of that build-out. With the unknown fixtures, the only thing that we may know is the actual pipe size that is discharging from that kitchen area. In that case, what we do is we take the capacity of that pipe by gravity flow and use that to determine the maximum GPM that can be uh, expelled from that kitchen or that cooking area. This table basically is generated on gravity flow through different pipe sizes. So again, if we're in the uh, design area where we have a rough in condition, if we know, for instance, that the drain line coming out of the cooking area is a three inch size, a three inch pipe at a quarter inch slope by gravity, full flow, uh, will not exceed 58 gallons per minute. If we then, for a hydromechanical, take the next available common size, which 
be a 75 gallon. That would be the proper sizing for the three inch pipe. So even though we didn't know the fixtures that may end up in the kitchen, we can still size the proper interceptor. Gravity interceptor, as you can see for that three inch pipe, would be a 2,000 uh, gallons. And the way we uh, achieve that is basically by that formula we used before where we took GPM times 30 and the nearest uh, available common size for gravity interceptor for a three inch pipe would be the 2,000 gallons, uh, gallon size tank. Uh, additional information is available on our website. As I mentioned before, uh, PDI standard G101 is the rating and performance requirements for the hydromechanical interceptors. Uh, there's also another document uh, called PDI Guide to Grease Interceptors, which has some additional general information about the installation and use of grease interceptors. Thank you very much for your time and uh, your participation in this web seminar. Have a nice day.